Some nine miles north of the city of Mathura, in the village of Mart, there is a place called Tokri Tila. In 1911, an excavation was carried out here, and in this excavation, archaeologists recovered several statues, and some of these statues had inscriptions written on them. And from these inscriptions, archaeologists learned that this place was once a Devakula, which in Sanskrit means deity house. Now, this deity house or Devakula was no ordinary Devakula because most of the statues that were present here were of kings and not of any gods. Now, these kings belonged to a dynasty that had Central Asian origin. Most of us know them as Kushanas. And in this video, we will talk about these Kushanas and we will see how they founded an empire that stretched from the Central Asian region up to the Ganga Valley. The initial history of the Kushanas was a history of defeat and loss because Kushanas were part of a tribe called Yuchis. And the Yuchis initially had their homeland in the northwest part of China. Now, after a series of losses, we find that the Yuchis eventually eventually migrated to the north of Bactria and this was around 130 BC and we find that after some time they had conquered the region of Bactria and driven back the Indo-Greeks from there. After this conquest of Bactria, something happened within the tribe because now the tribe was split into five different clans. Now we do not know the exact reason behind this split but what we do know is that this split lasted around a century. And it was only around 26 AD that the Yuchis were once again united. And this time they were united under the banner of Guishang or Kushanas. Now the Kushanas or Guishang as they were called in the Chinese text were one of the five clans of the Yuchis. And it was under their leader Kajula Catphysis that we see that the Kushanas had reunited the different clans of the Yuchis. Now the reason behind this unification were many but one of the most important reason behind this unification was the presence of an external threat and this external threat threat was coming from the south. We find that during this period in the Indian subcontinent, Gondofaris, the Indo-Parthian king was conquering the region of Northwest and North India. There was a serious threat for the Yuchis and their five different clans that Gondofaris might invade the Bactrian territory. And that is what compelled them to reunite. Now after this reunification, the Kushanas became a serious power. And one of the first target of the Kushanas was the last Indo-Greek kingdom that were situated south of the Kushana territory. And we find that the conquest of the last Indo-Greek kingdom did not take much long for the Kushanas. After this conquest, we see that the Kushana territory and the territory of the Indo-Parthians shared a common border. And it appears that Kajula Cadphysis had also tried to conquer the Kabul Valley. But this was not the right time to do so. Because during this period, the Indo-Parthian Empire was at its peak. And the attempt of the Kushanas to conquer the Kabul Valley failed miserably. Having learned his lesson, Kajula Catphysis knew that now he has to bide his time and wait for a right opportunity. And this opportunity came around 46 AD with the death of the Indo-Parthian king Gondofaris. We find that after the death of Gondofaris, the large Indo-Parthian empire was divided into two parts. And these two parts constantly fought with each other. And this was the opportunity opportunity which Kajula Catphysis was waiting for. And the first target for the Kushan army was again the Kabul Valley. Now the conquest of Kabul Valley because there was no resistance from the Parthians was very easy. The Kabul Valley then became a staging post for the next invasion which would lead the Kushan army into the Indo-Parthian capital of Takshila. Around 78 BC, the Kushan cavalry laid waste to the great Indo-Parthian capital of Takshila. The destruction of the Indo-Parthians was so complete that most of the territories of the Indo-Parthians was now lost. 
we find that the kushanas under kajula kadfaises conquered most of the territory west of the indus and it was only the sindh region and the indo parthian homeland of shakastan which still remained under the hands of the indo parthians kajula kadfaises the person who reunited the yuchis and went on to found the kushan empire died at the age of 80 and it was his leadership that transformed a defeated tribe into a formidable empire but the death of kajula kadfaises did not stop the kushan conquest we find that after his death his son vima takto became the ruler of the kushan and it was under his leadership that the kushan army conquered the punjab plains and in the western theater vima takto also drove the indo parthians from the sindh region but the conquest of the upper ganga valley and particularly the city of mathura happened in the reign of vima kadfaises who was the son of vima takto the strategic location of mathura provided kushanas with three distinct advantages the first was that with the conquest of mathura kushanas now could easily defeat any threat that was coming from the malwa region or from the lower ganga valley the second advantage of mathura was that it became a staging post for future campaigns that will see the kushan army going further into the ganga valley and the third advantage had to do with the fact that during this period mathura became a center for the trade route that connected the central asian region to the entire indian subcontinent so the conquest of mathura was strategically very important for the kushanas and the importance of mathura in the kushan scheme can also be seen from the fact that vima kadfaises choose mathura for the construction of the devkula which we have talked about now when we look at the indian sources for kushan history what is surprising is that in the indian sources the term kushan never appears instead in the puranas we have the term tushar and in mahabharata and ramayan the term tukhar appears most of the indian sources are pretty clear on the fact that these tusharas or tukharas are distinct people and the land from which they came is also distinct and is situated beyond the frontiers of india another interesting point which some scholars argue is that tokri tila from which we have started our video according to some scholar was initially called tukhari's tila which meant the mound of tukharas and later this became known as tokri tila so this was a corruption of tukhara so you can see how in the folk memory the history of a particular region survives now coming back to the kushana history we see that it was under the reign of vima kadfaises son whose name was kanishk that the kushana empire reached its peak now we will talk about kanishk in a separate video and if you want to know about the sources that i have used for this video please see the description thank you for watching